All right, let's talk about space. You guys know it's my favorite, my favorite thing to talk about. This is kind of cool. Check this out. So scientists determine the origin of extrasolar object Amuamua. Uh, so this is not it right here. This is a painting uh, by William Hartman. So Amuamua, if you don't know what it is, back in 2017 came through our solar system. It was an interstellar object that came in and left. Now there is a scientist out there that claims that it changed trajectory. I did a segment on this a couple months ago. It's very interesting. He says there's no way that this uh, could just be natural. It it has to have been uh, some sort of alien device or something. That he's very bold on his claims. Other people say he's he's a crackpot. Like dude doesn't know what he's talking about. But he is uh, a, a fairly a prominent figure before he made these claims and now they're like whoa no he's crazy so we can't listen to him anymore so and this just talks about it uh the first interstellar object from beyond our solar system was discovered via the pan stars astronomical observatory in hawaii it was named amuamua meaning scout or messenger in hawaii the object was like a comet but with features that were just odd enough to defy classification Two Arizona State University astrophysicists, Stephen Desch and Alan Jackson, of the School of Earth and S uh, Space Exploration, set out to explain the odd features of Amuamua and have determined that it is likely a piece of a Pluto-like planet from another solar system. Their findings have been recently published in a pair of papers in the AGU Journal of Geophysical Research Planets. In many ways, Amuamua resembled a comet, but it was peculiar enough in several ways that mystery surrounded its nature, and speculation ran rampant about what it was, said Desh, who was a, pro a professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. From observations of the object, Desh and Jackson determined several characteristics of the object that differ from what would be expected from a comet. In terms of speed, the object entered the solar system at a velocity a bit lower than would be expected, indicating that it had, been, it had not been traveling in interstellar space for more than a billion years or so. In terms of size, its pancake shape was more flattened than any other known uh, solar system object. They also observed that while the object acquired a slight push away from the sun, a rocket effect common in comets as sunlight vaporizes the ice that they are made of, the push was stronger than could be accounted for. How then? Anyway, finally, the object lacked a detectable escaping gas, which is usually depicted visibly by a comet's tail. In all, the object was very much like a comet, but unlike any comet that has ever been observed in the solar system. Desch and Jackson then hypothesized that the object was made of different ices and they calculated how quickly these ices would uh, sublimate, passing from solid to gas, as Amuamua passed by the sun. From there, they calculated the rocket's effects and the object's mass and shape and reflex, uh, reflectivity of the ices. That was an exciting moment for us, Desh said. We realized that a chunk of ice that would be much more reflective than people were assuming would meant it could be smaller. The same rocket effect would then give Amuamua a bigger push bigger than comets usually experience. Desh and Jackson found one ice in particular, solid nitrogen, that provided an exact match to all the object's features simultaneously. And since solid nitrogen ice can be seen on the surface of Pluto, it is possible that the comet-like object could be made of the same material. We know it had hit on the right idea when we completed the calculation uh, for what albedo, how reflective the body is, would make the motion of Amuamua match the observations, said Jackson, who is a research scientist at, and an exploration fellow at ASU. That value came out as being the same as we observed on the surface of Pluto or Triton, bodies covered in nitrogen ice. They then calculated the rate at which the chunks of solid nitrogen ice would have been knocked off of the surface of Pluto and similar bodies early in our solar system's history. And they calculated the probability that chunks of solid nitrogen ice from other solar systems would reach ours. It was likely knocked off of the surface by an impact that half a billion, uh, about half a billion years ago and thrown out of its parent system, Jackson said, being made of 
frozen nitrogen also explains the unusual shape of a muamua. As the outer layers of nitrogen ice evaporated, the shape of the body would have become progressively more flattened, just like a bar of soap does as the outer layers get rubbed off through use. Uh, now, this is where they talk about the alien tech. Although Amuamua's comet-like nature was quickly recognized, the inability to immediately explain in detail led to speculation that it is a piece of alien technology. As in the recent published book, Extraterrestrial, the first line, sign of intelligent life beyond Earth by Avi Loeb. This is who I was talking about earlier at Harvard University. Yeah, he's of Harvard. This guy, this is the person who was basically saying has to be alien life. This is actually a pretty cool... Uh, let's open this and take a look-see here. So this is basically what they're proposing, that it was ejected from their solar system, the parent system, and traveled to the solar system, through our solar system, and then out of our solar system. And you can see our sun, and here's our Earth right here. Uh, beautiful. This has sparked a public debate about the scientific method and the responsibility of scientists not to jump to unwarranted conclusions. Everybody is interested in aliens, and it was inevitable that this first object outside the solar system would make people think of aliens, Desh said. But it's important in science not to jump to conclusions. It took two or three years to figure out a natural explanation, a chunk of nitrogen ice that matches everything we know about Amuamua. That's not that long in science and far too soon to say we had exhausted all natural explanations. Although there is no evidence that it is alien technology as a fragment of a Pluto-like planet, Amuamua has provided scientists with a special opportunity to look at extrasolar uh, systems in a way that they have not been able to before. As more objects like Amuamua are found and studied, scientists can continue to expand our understanding of what other planetary systems are like and the ways in which we are similar to or different from our own solar system. This research is exciting in that we've probably resolved the, the mystery of what Amuamua is and we can reasonably identify it as a chunk of exo-Pluto, a Pluto-like planet in another solar system, Tesh says. Until now, we've uh, had no way to know if other solar systems have Pluto-like planets, but now we have seen a chunk of one pass by Earth. Of course, see, I find it interesting that now they're just going on, well, we figured it out, so that's what it is, so see, now we've proven all this stuff. Isn't it just more theories? I mean, they're... look, guys, I understand that the science makes sense, but that still doesn't prove it because it's gone. The thing left, all right? It bounced. Um, and when I did the report on Avi Lode's uh, finding, uh, when he wrote Extraterrestrial, The First Signs of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, I mean, a lot of the stuff that he was explaining does make a lot of sense. Uh, so they continue on and, and that they're going to be continuing looking for extrasolar objects, which is very exciting. I can't wait. And But they did mention Triton, which I have another article that I'm probably going to read tomorrow because it's quite long, but it's about... Uh, new NASA projects that they're announcing and they're going to be going to Triton and I have a cross-section I'm very excited about when we get to finally start exploring the moons of our solar system because there's a lot of moons on our in our solar system that have water maybe not uh, H2O water like we have well I guess it wouldn't be water but liquid oceans is more accurate uh, some of them do have uh, water but I'm very excited to search through those things and see if there is animals living like who knows maybe there is some sort of methane based you know octopus on uh what is it titan i think it's methane oceans on titan anyway i'm very excited about it so we're going to be paying attention to that as uh, we go forward and yeah hopefully we we find something really incredible out there